This video covers making your very first sandbox map, from your first time opening the tools to uploading it to the sandbox workshop. We make this very basic outdoor map with a simple structure with no interior, some static props, physics props, and very basic lighting. Advanced topics like light probes and light maps are not covered in this video. If you find this guide useful, click the like button and subscribe. Before you launch the game, you have to make an add-on. So right-click Sandbox on Steam, go to Properties, Local Files, and click Browse. This will open up your main Sandbox folder. In here, go to the Add-ons folder and create a new add-on. You can call this whatever you want. I'll open this up, and inside it, I'll create a Maps folder. This is where all of your maps will be saved. I'll go back out to the main Sandbox folder and open up sbox-dev. This is the dev tools for the game. The first time you load it, it might take a while, but after that, it'll load pretty quick. I'll go up to the top left and open up Hammer Editor. This is the level editor for Sandbox. I'll make it full screen, and then I'll click File, New to create a new map. On the top and left side are a bunch of tools. On the right side are properties and other tools. And in the center, we have our main views. This top one is the 3D view. The bottom left is the top-down view and the bottom right is your asset browser. To move the camera around, I'll mouse over the 3D view and either right click or press Z to toggle the camera. I can use WASD to move. I can press Shift Z to toggle full screen on any of these main views, including the asset browser. I usually keep my 3D view full screened so I can have the maximum screen space. I'll go to the left side and click on the block tool or press Shift B. I can then click somewhere and drag out a block. I'll press enter to complete it, and now I have a block in my level. I can press Q, E, R, and T to change my tool mode. Q lets me resize it using the gizmos. E is for scaling. R is to rotate. I can change my rotation angle on the bottom right. I like to leave it at 15 though. And T is the translate tool, so I can move it around. You can change the grid scale by going down here and changing it, or by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. I'm going to set my grid to be 16. I will resize this to be a grass platform, and I have to give it a grass texture. So I'll press Shift Z to open up my asset browser, and I'll go to the materials tab. Here I'll search for grass. This material looks good, so I can either click and drag it out, or I can click it and press Shift T to apply it. Now I have a grass platform. I'll go back into full screen mode and I'll put down a player spawn point entity. On the left here, I'll click the entity tool and then I'll click somewhere in the level. Then I'll go back to selection mode by pressing Shift S and I can move the spawn point around just like I could a mesh. A quick way to move this is by pressing Control X to cut it and Control V to paste it somewhere else. Now I'll make another box next to my player. This will be a brick box. This looks good, I'll press enter. I'll go back to my asset browser and search for a brick. This material looks good, so I'll press shift Z to apply it and then go back to full screen mode. I have my player spawn point down so I can see how big the objects are compared to the player. This is a pretty tall brick thing, so I'll make it a little bit shorter. Next, I'll do some advanced mesh editing on this brick thing. I'll turn it into some weird house thing. I can switch between selection modes by pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on my keyboard. This switches between vertice mode, the individual corners of an object, edge mode, the edges of an object, face mode, which is the faces of an object, or mesh, which is an entire mesh. Object and group mode are pretty similar to mesh, but sometimes you'll have multiple meshes in one object or multiple objects in one group. So I'll go to edge mode by pressing two and select an edge. I'll go over and click select ring or press G to select a ring of edges. And then I'll connect them by pressing V. I've just created an edge loop around my object. I can move this around and even create more. So I'll click the edge again and I'll press G and V to make my edge loop. I'll make another one over here. And now I'll go into face mode by pressing three and I can select any of these faces and manipulate them. I can drag them out, drag them up, 
or I can hold shift and drag to extrude. I can extrude outwards or inwards. Now I have my weird house thing. It's perfect, but there's no lighting yet. So I'll have to add some in. I'll go back to the entity tool by pressing shift E and then I'll change the type to be point light. I can click down on my map and it'll spawn a light entity. I can also spawn a spotlight. These are the two main types of light that you'll use. In the top right corner of my 3D view, I can see the lighting mode. I can switch between full bright and all lighting with F5 and F6. I can also click here to see more options. I'll press T to translate them, and then I'll rotate the spotlight so it's facing down, and I'll move this point light somewhere else. On the right side of the screen, I have the object properties window. Here I can change the brightness and the color. I can set it to anything I want. I'm going to set it back to one. Now I have lights in my map, but there's no light from the sun. There's not even a sky, it's completely black. So I'll press Shift E to open up the entity tool again, and I'll put down an environment light. It looks like a sun, and that's because it is the sun. It's the sunlight. I can rotate it around however I want, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to press Shift E to open up the entity tool again and put down a sky. Now I have a sky in my map. I can press Shift S to go back to the select tool and move this around. Moving the skybox doesn't actually adjust it, but you can rotate it. If I want to change the texture of the skybox, I can press Shift S and look in my asset browser. I'll search for sky and I'll lower the icon size so I can see more at once. I can click here and I can drag one of these skybox materials over to the sky material property on my ENV sky. It'll change it and we can see it appear instantly. I'm not going to worry about changing any of the properties in the light environment because I can have them set up automatically. I'll go to my sky entity and I'll give it a name. I'll just call it sky. And now I'll go to my sunlight entity, my light environment, and I'll scroll down until I find sky. And under sky IBL source, I'll click the eyedrop tool and I'll click on the sky entity. This has linked my light environment to my sky. Now I can right click my light environment, go to selected entities and click estimate lighting from HDR skybox. This will automatically generate the perfect lighting for the skybox. I don't actually like this lighting, so I'll change it back to the default and recalculate it. This looks pretty good. Now I'll put some props down in my level. I'll click on the models tab and I'll clear out the selection. I'm going to click here to sort mods by only core because a lot of the rest assets are probably placeholder and might not be in the final game. If you really want to, you can use the rest assets, but you have to keep in mind that they might be deleted later and then you'll have errors in your map. So personally, I'm going to keep it to the core folder and any custom assets I make. I can search on the top for models. I know there are bench models and then I can click and drag one of these benches from the asset browser into the world. Now I have a static prop in my level. This prop does not move and you can't interact with it. It's basically the same thing as the brick structure over here. It's part of the map. I can move it around the same way I move around anything else with Q, E, R, and T. I can cut and paste it to quickly move it and I can even resize props. So this looks a little strange, but you can do it in source too, and it'll work. I'll clear my filter and drop in some other props. There's some street cabinets, and it looks like they just added this brick fence. I'll add in some physics props too. For example, this gas cylinder is a physics prop. I'll also put in a concrete barrier. I'm going to go into full screen mode with Shift Z, and now I'll hold Shift and select both of these objects because I want both of these to be physics objects. I'll go to the class type over here and I'll change this from prop static to prop physics. These will now be props that I can move around in game. Not every prop supports physics though. So if I want to quickly find out if a prop can be physics, I can press shift plus C on my keyboard or click over here to open up the physics tool. If a prop glows when you mouse over it, that means it can be physics. So it looks like all of these can be physics except for this part of the brick wall. I can click and drag the props around to interact with them and pose them however I like. 
This even works with my jumbo chair, which is going to be a static prop in game. So I'll press Shift S when I'm done with this to go back to regular selection mode, and it's still in that location that it moved to. This looks pretty good. I have a basic map now. I think I'm ready to compile it and test it in game. So I'll press F9 on my keyboard to open up the compile window. And it looks like I've actually made a mistake. I forgot to save the map. The very first thing you do when you open up a map is you should save it. So I'll press Shift S to save and I'll navigate to the add-on folder that I made at the start of the video. I'm saving it inside the maps folder. You can title the map whatever you want. This will be the file name in game. Now I'll press F9 to compile the map and I'll change it to be a fast compile. I'll click build. This might take a while for the first time, but this map is very simple, so it won't take that long. It's already loaded. So here's my very cool map that I made. This is a static prop, so it doesn't move, but these two are physics props, so I can move them with the physion and even shoot the explosive barrel. I have my strange brick cube that I made. It looks very impressive. I'm very proud of it. If you look closely, you can see the spotlight and the blue light here. There is an issue with visibility on outdoor maps. If dynamic entities like props or players get too far away from the ground, they'll disappear. Source 2 still uses a similar style to Source 1, where it treats everything as an indoor level. Facepunch is going to be fixing that in the future, but for now, an easy way to fix that is actually just to turn off visibility entirely. For a map this small, you don't actually need to run visibility. So I'll go up to Map, Map Properties, and then I'll change Pre-Computed Visibility to be disabled. And then I'll press F9 to recompile the map. I'll click the plus by settings, and then I'll tick build the visibility. Once I compile the map, it'll be fixed in game. At this point, the map is basically done, and I could technically upload it to the workshop. Although it's very bad, so I do not recommend uploading very bad maps like this. There are a lot more advanced things that you should be putting in your map, such as light probes and actually baking your light maps. But those are somewhat advanced, so I'm not going to cover them in this video. I am going to show you how to upload a map though. So I'll go into the folder with my map in it. That's add-ons, my add-on, maps, and I'll find the VPK file. This is the compiled map. I can pack this into a zip file. I have WinRAR, so I'll do it with that. And now this is ready to be uploaded. I'll open up my web browser and I'll go to the Sandbox dev website. It's sbox.facepunch.com slash dev. I'll log in, create an organization if I haven't. And then in my organization page, I'll click add content and choose type map. For the map name, I have to use the exact same file name as what I called my map. So I call this my underscore cool underscore map. So I'll have to put that here as the short name, my cool map. Now I can go to name and description, give this an actual name. I'll call it my cool map, write a description. I can change the dev state to be developing and save it. If I change it to hot release or cool release, it'll show up in the map browser. But if it's on one of these settings, it will show up only when you search for the map name. So I'll go to downloads. I'll set the download type to be zip file. And then I'll go to my add-ons folder and I can click and drag this zip file onto where it says choose file. Now I can click save changes. It'll upload the map. And now it'll work in game. I'll find sandbox and click create game and change the map and search for the name of the map. It's my cool map. Here it is. Since I did not set it to a release date, it's not appearing on newest, which is good. I don't want it to appear on newest yet. I just want it to be in game so other people can join me. I should be able to load it up in game. It's downloading it from the workshop right now and I'm in. I just checked and it looks like somebody else is already joining. So here you can see the map is definitely working. This random person just joined as soon as I loaded up the map. That's crazy. Well, that's it. Like, comment, and subscribe.